What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, November 2nd, 2017. I'm one of your hosts alongside the busiest lady in the business, Andrew Renee. What's good, Greg? Not much. How are you? I am doing pretty well. You know, I'm excited for the weekend. It's just a day away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have a lot of adult chores to do, but I also have, I also have some video games that I'm looking forward to playing. What's on your What's on your play? This um, weekend? right now I'm really into Assassin's Creed Origins. You are really into it. Okay, yes. that's gonna come up here. Well, you know what? I can just put it in here. What am I thinking? It's our show, Andrea. Are you it's sure? Kind of funny games daily. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> I talked about. Assassin's Creed Origins recently and on a variety of platforms and shows saying that I gave it an hour and just it didn't get me and I just left and I've been looking forward to it, but it didn't click for me. God of Steel wrote into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD just like you can and says in defense of Assassin's Creed Origins. Sup Greg? I was watching the games cast anxious to hear your opinions on Assassin's Creed Origins and was disappointed it didn't to hear it didn't grab you and therefore you didn't like it as much as other Assassin's Creed games. After playing about 20 hours of it, all I can say is this is exactly what we wanted. It takes past criticism into consideration and carefully crafts an experience that feels vastly different to previous titles, but familiar enough that it feels like you're playing an Assassin's Creed game. After Assassin's Creed 3, we said we didn't want to have a game ha hold our hand for literally four or five hours before finally opening the world to us. Origins throws you into the world from the beginning. After the bland charm vacuum that was Assassin's Creed 3, Unity, and Syndicate, Origin gives us characters we can love in Bayek? How do I say it? Yeah, Bayek. Bayek in Siwa. 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 Siwa is a place, though. Mm, okay. Oh, His of B Bayek of Siwa. Siwa. Yeah. That's what saying. He's passionate and fierce and flawed and so goddamn likable. The controls are simplified. He goes on and basically ends, so Greg, I just wanted you to give Origins another chance because this is in the running to be my game of the year. And by God, Assassin's Creed is back. Keep up the good work. Do you agree? Are you enjoying it this much? Yes. Wow. How far are you right now? Ballpark. Um, I just hit level 10, so I'm still okay. very early sure. um, in the game. Um, but I am really enjoying it. It's, it's challenging in a way that we haven't really seen in an Assassin's Creed for a while. Okay. Um, some people like that. Some people don't. The RPG elements that they've mixed in are a very big departure for the franchise, which is something I'm still getting used to. I'm not sure quite how I feel about grinding being in mm, Assassin's Creed, mm. me having to go and do all of these side quests and little side missions. Um, hunting is a much bigger part of the crafting mechanic this time gotcha. around. Very far cry in that way. Um, so I think they definitely needed to change up the formula. 100%. And they absolutely did this time around. Um, and I'm still getting my feet under me, but I've been up late the last couple of nights nice. in a row because I just keep doing one quest after another. Gotcha. And the progression feels tangible. Like you get new weapons, you can constantly be switching out your gear. And I love that the customization is back. One of the things I've always really enjoyed about the Assassin's Creed franchise is being able to change your look of your assassin, whether it was all the way back to like Altair and Ezio, yeah. you know, all the way through the current. Dying your cloak or dying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, or wearing these it. different full outfits. Sure. Um, well, that was one of my best memories of like the, I think it was Assassin's Creed 2 with Ezio, but it might've been Brotherhood of like, you know, going into the, with the wolf den or whatever they called them and there'd yep. be awesome armor and awesome pieces That's back too. I just nice. did a quest last night that gave me a, a legendary um, uh, costume and it's, it's good. It's okay. really good so far. Yeah, I mean, my only my complaint was it felt like I got thrown in it right away from it and I didn't know who he was and I didn't know what the world was and it was just kind of overwhelming in a way that I'm like, ah, this seems like a, I, hour. Yeah, I think they need to split the difference. I okay. think that they what they've done previously have, by having too much exposition up front yeah. clearly was a mistake. Sure. But now there's not enough. And mm. I know it's kind of like, where's the Goldilocks moment in this? Sure. But I do think that they probably needed a little bit more narrative because they, they don't introduce you to your wife in the game, who is a major part of Assassin's Creed Origins until you hit level 10. Oh, wow. So you have to do several hours of gameplay. Like the prologue is very long mm, in this mm. game. Uh, I remember when I saw the the text come up, you know, like completed prologue. I was yeah, like, what? that was all the prologue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that there's a fine balance between what's too much and what's not enough. Okay. Um, and they kind of haven't quite hit that yet, but I think it's better to have more gameplay 
and less story up front than yeah, I, the yeah. other way around. It seems like since I've I talked about it on Gamescast, so many people have hit me up and been like, I was right there with you, but you, Kevin was saying the same thing. I was right there with you and Kev, but you need to play a little bit more. Give it a couple hours. You'll actually fall in love with it and what it is yeah. what you want. I mean, it, this is, I was talking about this on the What's Good podcast, which comes out tomorrow um, about how- YouTube.com slash What's Good Games. That's right. Um, about how- there is it, it has very much taken on this identity of traditional RPGs, action RPGs in particular, where you need to sink a good 15 to 20 hours mm -hmm. in in order to get over that initial hump where yeah. you feel like you're in it. Yeah. And all good RPGs are that way. I mean, it's sure. really tough. Even if you look at a game like Mass Effect Andromeda, which you know had a lot of criticisms for a variety of reasons, but as far as the overall scope of the gameplay, I didn't really get hooked on that game until like hour 25. Mm, and then mm. I was like in it and yeah. I was excited to do all of the little quests and meet all the people and check off all the boxes all the like min maxing that RPG fans love yeah you don't get that good stuff until you sink hmm. some investment in yeah that makes sense and it's just so tough right now with so many different games it out, is where it is like Wolfenstein right from the get-go I was like I'm in love with this game the aesthetic of it it's way too hard it's killing me but I'm gonna keep playing it <laughs> baby ass baby better. mode as we like to say yeah, exactly. just do it <laughs> but then same thing with Mario right where I feel like it's rewarding right away I'm yeah aim there, there having it so it's it, for me it was just the paralysis of choice where it's yeah. like all right I'm not feeling Assassin's Creed I'm gonna put it aside and get to what is speaking to me right now that's just the problem that we're at at this point in time you know I also put Assassin's Creed on easy mode because as much as I love that franchise I'm like okay if I want to play this for a challenge I can come back to it later right. but right now i'm trying to see as much of the story as possible and in order to do that i need to not be you know wasting time figuring yeah. out the best strategy for some of these fights that's always I just the need worst to, right? i just need to kind of barrel through them in our world where it is we want to talk about everything we want to yeah. touch everything to have something to say when you get to it and you get to a boss battle and you're running that was wolfenstein for me where i the first time i dialed the difficulty down i'm just like I can't like the load, to load times are noticeable too. And I'm like, I can't waste yep. 30 minutes of my night trying to get through whatever this one thing is that has me stuck. No, I'm with you. But I highly recommend if you guys have at all liked the Assassin's Creed franchise in the past, um, I they've done a really great job this time around. I went back to the legacy control scheme. I know oh, they yeah. specifically yeah, yeah, yeah. designed it to have the action bu uh, buttons on the on the bumpers. But I, I went back to the face buttons so. yeah and, and i like else, it well, I, was I like it a lot better <laughs> i was complaining about that and somebody's like you can switch i'm like when i come back to this game i definitely will yeah but for now this is kind of funny games daily each and every weekday on a variety of platforms we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about before jumping in to your questions giving you some perspective reading bad psn names and having fun if you like that you can follow along on a variety of platforms. We broadcast the show live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. However, if you're watching live, we don't look at the chat. The only way to get your questions read on the show is to write in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD. If you are watching live, though, we require you to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what facts we screw up as we screw them up. So at the end of the show, we can read them, correct it, and set the record straight for everyone watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames or listening on podcast services around the globe. Kevin, House. What? Kevin, there's no timer going. Kevin, don't care. Kevin's over there on his time codes. He's all set. He doesn't need us. Ain't that right, big Kev dog? Oh, oh. yeah, that's what I did here. Uh, housekeeping, one simple one for you. Extra Life is Saturday. It's coming up. It's us, 24 hours, raising money for the big, beautiful kids over there at Extra Life, Children's Miracle Network. You can support right now by going to kindoffunny.com slash Extra Life. You can join the team right there and stream on your own to raise money for this and help the Kind of Funny team, or you could just donate there if you want. No matter what, though, you should watch Saturday, twitch.tv slash games. 24 hours of video games and stupid things and crazy things. Mm -hmm. Do we have a wheel we might use as like a punishment wheel? We do. I've what, I'm not allowed it. to tease it? It's not a punishment wheel. I'm going to put punishments on it. No, that's what the little wheel is. Oh, the little wheel is the if punishment it, wheel? It, the big wheel it comes in time. Okay, well, we'll figure it all out. Don't worry. A lot we'll of cool stuff planned for Extra Life this year. You should watch. Andrew, are you coming by? Are you going to swing through? You I think I'm going to swing through. Yeah, that's Andrew. That's what I like to hear. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Time for some news. Get ready for Kevin to yell at me. Two items on the Roper Report. Oh, bankers dozen! Oh, I thought he was going to do that. He usually gets mad when there's just two. When there's three, he's I okay most of the time. Half-assed, bankers dozen. No, you no I good. liked it, Kevin. You did good. You did no, good. No, no, no. I mean, you... Oh, I'm half-assing. Yeah. Oh, it's a half ass Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, that's No, it, he's not half-assing it, Kevin. Trust me. Uh, we were back there trolling for some good news stories, yeah. and there's just not a lot out today. Andrea, she's, she works hard. She goes through there. She cross-references. She, she's a good, good co-host. 
Unlike that Danny O'Dwyer who hasn't shown up for work in quite some time. I miss him so much. First item on the Roper Report. Super Mario Odyssey is the fastest selling Mario game ever. Here's the press release from Nintendo. In just five days, the new Super Mario Odyssey video game for the Nintendo Switch system sold more than 1.1 million units in the U.S. alone. That makes it the fastest selling Mario game ever in the U.S., surpassing new Super Mario Brothers Wii game. The, um, the. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey is also the fastest selling game so far for the Nintendo Switch. On Metacritic.com, which aggregates scores for certain reviewers, for example, the game currently has a critical review average of 97 with 43 perfect scores. This makes Super Mario Odyssey the best reviewed game on Metacritic for any system of the last three years, tied only with Nintendo Switch launch game The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Nintendo has increased supplies of Nintendo Switch to meet demand through the holidays. Andrew? Yes. Is Mario Odyssey a, a 10 out of 10? I haven't played enough of it to, to, to say. Okay. okay. But I imagine with my history in the Mario franchise that it probably could be yeah. a 10 out of 10. A perfect game score. Yeah is a rare thing. And that's why it's so frustrating when the gaming community gets mad when a game gets a nine out of 10. Cause I'm like, no, a nine out of 10 is an excellent score of course. because you have to reserve the elusive 10 out of 10 for the very rare, perfect game experience. The cream of the crop. Exactly. One thing that Nintendo is known for is their level of polish and their dedication to making sure when they release a game that it's not broken. Right, that there's nothing about it that's broken. Yeah, um, and they pretty much across the board accomplish this. I mean, obviously there's a couple here and there, but not with Mario, right? Like they don't release broken Mario games. Yeah. So and polish is something that is incredibly important when talking about perfection in game design, and that's something that now I feel like a lot of developers. I don't say, I don't know if letting it slip is the right kind of phrase, but I feel like they are a little bit more flexible with their polish policies because of how easy it is to patch. put in patches now yep. versus before when we were in a disc based only gaming you know you era. get the cartridge that's what it is yeah. right so now it's like well we can we can patch it in later we can see how the community is we can put the balancing in after launch but nintendo so far does not publish their games that way and i think that that is very commendable and they deserve praise for that yeah i love super mario odyssey I, you, I think you caught the show yesterday. I like, did I'm catch the sure show yesterday. Gonna, right now it's my game of the year. I think it finally... Yeah. You know what's interesting about you saying that is like, it's tough because one of the things that we need to consider as critics for game of the year PUBG, is... Of no, PUBG's not in the conversation, she gets Greg. so Stop mad. It. When you talk about the perfection of Super Mario Odyssey and the jank of PUBG, I they just are Danny not... I believe O'Dwyer from Noclip no. that said jank is a feature, though. No, <laughs> jank is not a feature. <laughs> My my point is like, for example, let's take categories. If you look at the categories for the for the Game Awards last year, twenty sixteen, yeah. yeah, and if you can't comfortably nominate and and have your game of the year pick win the majority of those categories, including art design, narrative, sound design, um, game directing, voice acting, right? Like if if your game of the year pick mm -hmm. can't cross many of those categories and potentially win the bulk of those categories, then why should it be game of the year? Mm, mm, right? Yeah. And when I look at that through that lens, I don't know if Super Mario Odyssey makes makes the case for that. My argument, counter argument would be like, well, voice acting, right? Like, wahoo! Like, that's all there is. So like, that doesn't need that's to be just on one, there. That's right? just one category. No, I know, but I'm saying like a reason why it wouldn't be there. And same with narrative, right? Like this is where it starts. Narrative to get into. is super important for game design. Hey, I agree. I'm you know, I'm very much a story horror, as I say. That's why I play games. I play them right. for Horizon. My, story. my point is, it doesn't mean that it can't be an excellent game that gets a perfect score. Sure. But when we're talking about game of the year, yeah. like the pinnacle game of across all of these different parameters. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's important to take a look at all of these different, you know, categories uh, and does your game of the year, you know, fit into those categories? Does it, does it excel here, 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 mm -hmm. here, and mm -hmm. here? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if Mario does. My one thing would be, isn't gameplay king? Isn't that the major majority of it? Like, I mean, we want, you and I want stories out of our games. I crave stories out of my game. I want right? to connect with characters and go that way. But in Mario, right, like, 
I don't the narr- uh, I don't need Greg, a- you're not sucking me into another game of the year discussion. I heard you do this with Gary yesterday. Hey, it's called a good discussion, <laughs> Andrea. And it's all about Mario right now. So we're on topic. I'll no, have here's you know. the thing. Here's the difference. I am going to say I have not played enough Mario to accurately judge it against my current game of the year contenders. Yeah. Just like Gary yesterday has not played any Horizon, so he can't judge it He's against other trash. Game of the Year contenders. I don't know why Kevin. I need to him. play more, yeah. and I'd be happy to discuss. You more need to come on Game of the Year Gamescast when we get yes, to that point. Let's do it for now. Though, let's kick it over to Lucy, who wrote into kindoffunny.com slash kfgd and says, "Hi, Greg and Andrea. Last week, you two were talking about reviewing games and how you both don't like how scoring games." How you both don't like how scoring games with numbers works, I'll say. That got me thinking about other types of media and how they scored when they're reviewed. Films and music, even wrestling, generally use a five-star rating system. So my question is, do you guys think a five-star rating system would work for reviewing games as well? Love the show and thanks for the hard work you guys do. Lucy, a.k.a. Luce. (laughs) FYI, Greg, it's still pronounced Lucy just with the extended A at the end. Thanks. (laughs) How do you feel about stars over uh, numbers? Um, stars are the same as scores. Yeah. They're the same. They get boiled down the exact same right way, right? Exactly. A four out of five stars, an excellent game, but still to a lot of people, that's not good enough. Yeah. You know, and that's the tough thing about putting any kind of a rating on a game, like whether it be stars or not, if you're going to use stars, sure, but you can still boil that down to a decimal, right? Like four, four and a half stars is 4.5 out of five. Yep. That's just math. That's not. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> That's, know? And the, I, I like the star system. Even I mean, like the train left the station on video games a long time ago. I don't think with I, Giant Bomb does stars. Or do they do stars now? I, I they honestly did. don't know. Anyways, I think star. I think everybody in video games started using numbers, and numbers are just going to be there forever. And I think that's why we boil down stars to become numbers. I think that. I like the simplicity of stars. It, they I, do use stars on Giant Bomb. I think it's a better system in terms of a discussion. I, I liked it when IGN, when I was working there, they moved back to just doing a 20-point scale. So there were seven, seven, five, eight, eight, five, nine, nine, five. Because it breathes what I think this is, and that's discussion. Where it is, I'm giving this four stars. Read the thing why. It's not, It's when we go to, it's a 9.7, it's a 9.6, it's a nine. Like You get into the minutia of it. I feel like, it just doesn't work because that's such a. It, there's no scientific method for games. So it, uh, what's when I was you know I, there was a year when I reviewed and this is rusty. Stick with me. I reviewed Uncharted. No, it was Batman. Infam- oh, that's what it was. I had reviewed Uncharted. I reviewed Batman. Or I reviewed. Ba- <laughs> I read Uncharted. I reviewed Infamous. And then when I was reviewing Batman Arkham Asylum, I was using my own thing of, in my own head of how they all matched up to uh, because I think it went nine one nine two nine three. Because I was like, I like it a little bit more than this, and a little, and it's just like, why the hell was I doing that? And like, that doesn't work for IGN overall, but you still have to come back to what it is and how to make a number out of an opinion, which is always a weird, stupid thing to do. Yeah, well, when you're reviewing a piece of creative work, it's always going to be partially subjective. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, that's just the fact of yeah. it. So that's why I don't like review scores. Agreed. Because what you would score something, what I would score something, would probably be different. Yeah. Because I have taste. Oh. Swish. You hear me, Kevin? You hear the swish? Got her. Got her. Narrate um, her up. Whatever, Patapon guy. Oh, uh, whatever. Uncharted 3. <laughs> <laughs> come on. At least give me, layer an Uncharted 3. If you're going to come for me, come for the good stuff. No one can uh, not argue that Patapon isn't a perfect 10. <laughs> Number two on the Roper Report. LA Noir is too big for the Switch hard drive. This is via IGN who writes, if you decide on the physical cartridge version of LA Noir, expect a 14 gigabyte download before you can play, which contains, quote, required gameplay data, as well as general bug fixes and improvements. However, those who opt for a digital copy of LA Noir for their Nintendo Switch will have to purchase a micro SD card, which is sold separately from the console. This is because LA Noir's file size is 29 gigabytes, just three gigabytes short of Nintendo Switch's 32 gigabyte internal storage capacity. As a standard, the console already uses 6.2 gigabytes of storage for the system itself, making it impossible to download on a Nintendo Switch without upgrading the internal storage. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why third-party triple a is not on switch it's definitely a hassle it's definitely but i mean i feel like they're gonna do it we already saw nba do it right wasn't nba that needed it i feel like for these companies that are bringing their games over they just have to put it on the box and people who want that kind of experience are gonna hopefully know i I feel like we're all educated enough gamers for the most part who are getting a switch who care about la noir 
that you, we all want the best, greatest storage anyway. True, but I think that there's many consumers out there who are fans of Nintendo and mm-hmm. have bought Nintendo consoles in the past that are not thinking about this. Sure. And so it's really up to retailers to indicate to consumers, hey, when you're buying this, you need to be aware that these are the system minimums yep. or maximums, and you should be aware that if you want to buy more than one game, you're going to need to buy this extra piece of equipment to go with it. 100%. And you hope the boxes call that out. It's it's a weird regression back to like memory cards, right? When you you, you want some you're I I I know kids who got PlayStations and right. started and then they want to go to save their game and they can't save it because up until then cartridges had been the norm and you knew how to save right internally. Right. Here you didn't and that was weird. So this is just a weird step backwards <laughs> on this system that's on the go, but it's also in the age of the digital download. I think feel so many people jumped yeah. out of the gate to buy these cards right away. I know I did. And then I didn't because the kid just sent us a whole bunch because he <laughs> ordered them from Amazon. He ordered one from Amazon. They sent him like seven. So he just sent the rest of kind of funny. Oh, that's nice. That's what happens. Yeah, good, I need to buy mine still. There. Well, yeah, because L.A. Noir is coming up. You're going to be all well, over it. I had to I had to delete one of my games to make room for Mario. I hate that. That's a bad feeling. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. I hate deleting games. Nobody's a fan. Andrea. Yes, Greg. L.A. Noir isn't out yet. True. But I want to play games that are out now. If I wanted to know what came to the digital mom and grop switch shops, where would I go? The official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every weekday. Yeah. Out today. <laughs> Strap in. It's Nintendo Day. Sparkle 2 Evo on the Nintendo Switch eShop. Farming Simulator. No, that's not right. I don't hate how Nintendo tries to update me for the whole week. So, no, Farming Simulator is coming out on the 7th. That goes into new dates. Perception. Yeah, okay. Well, there. Okay, so we're going to have to call them out as we go. So, then, new date. Farming Simulator Nintendo Switch Edition comes out on November 7th. Maybe not new, but we're giving the update. Perception comes to the Switch eShop today. Hiding Out comes to the 3DS on the November 6th. More Fight comes to the Nintendo eShop on the Switch. Super Beat Sports comes to the eShop and Nintendo Switch. I think we all know that these are all eShop Switch games. Okay. ACA, Neo Geo, Art of Fighting 3 comes to Switch. Wheels of a... So you're saying do I have to say Switch at all? Yes. Just call it out if it's 3DS or something else? Yeah, so the 3DS ones are at the bottom. So mm-hmm. until we switch to 3DS, these are all on well, Nintendo they just, Switch. Well, hiding out just hid out right in the middle there. That was the 3DS <laughs> one. All right, and less otherwise noted Switch game eShop. Wheels of Arulia, Heroes of the Monkey Tavern, November 7th. Style Savvy, Styling Star, Demo on the 3DS. Physical Contact, 2048, 3DS. Physical Contact, Speed, 3DS. Phil's Epic Fix a... F- Pix Adventure. I want to play that. 3DS. Philippix. <laughs> Tomalin in Trouble. Nintendo eShop Wii U. Power Golf Virtual Console Wii U. And then dot hack slash GU last recode PlayStation 4 PC. New dates for you. The For Honor team is hosting a free weekend November 9th through the 12th. So you can get on Xbox, PlayStation, or PC. Download For Honor. Give it a try. And then Andrea. You have two new dates I missed. Yes, so Pillars of Eternity 2, the definitive edition, will be available on PC, Mac, and Linux on November 15th. That includes both White March expansions, all premium extras, all new bundle of content, and yeah, that's it. Definitive edition. Plus, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, Don't Stop Believing, the fifth episode in the Telltale series, the finale, is arriving November 7th. You play it? No, me neither. I played episode one. I was just like, this, is, yeah. this isn't that I great. I played like a little bit of episode one and I was like, I can't. Yeah. But hey, it's wrapping up and it's an easy platinum, so go for it. <laughs> Deals of the day for you. Uh, I got this from Polygon. Costco put up their Black Friday ad. So Ooh. November 24th through the 27th, they have crazy deals on console. So here we go. You can get the Xbox One S 500 gigabyte sports bundle with a three month game pass and an extra controller for 300 bucks online only. PlayStation 4, one terabyte slim console bundle with Destiny 2 and Call of Duty World War 2 for $290 online only. Xbox One S 500 gigabyte bundle with three month game pass and an extra controller for $220. That's in store. And then PlayStation 4, one terabyte console with an extra controller for $190 in store. So how is it the deal of the day if I can't buy these until the end of the month? It's a deal and it's a heads up for you. Mm. I'm not going to remember to tell you at the end. I mean, well, it's That's Thanksgiving vacation. It's right. a deal of the day, and it's so good I had to tell him. Don't try to bust my balls. Well, this. the Tuesday before, we should do like a roundup of all the best Black Friday deals. No, no, no. <laughs> Too much work. Yeah, that's I mean, that's what <laughs> that's the, I mean that's the one where on the Tuesday before you throw a rock at IGN, Polygon, any of them. They got they got a million of those articles up. We'd be it would just be the entire show. 
I'm in, I'm, I'm in Costco's pocket, apparently. That's what it is. <laughs> Time for reader mail. I'm going to start with Greg Sinclair, who writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, what's up, Greg and Andrea? So this morning, I read Mark Medina's campaign preview for Call of Duty World War II on IGN. And I got to say, I'm intrigued. His preview talks about a mission where you have to infiltrate a Nazi base and memorize your cover to prevent being exposed. The mission looks really interesting and a tone shift from what COD campaigns have been like in the past. I am genuinely excited to jump in and experience the story that Sledgehammer has crafted. Here's my question. Do you see a future? Or do you see a future Call of Duty that ships without a single player campaign? I think Sledgehammer tends to put more focus on single player than other Call of Duty devs, but I'm not sure it makes financial sense for Activision to continuously funnel money into these experiences. Thanks for reading my question. Kind of Funny Games Daily has become my favorite game show on the internet. Greg. Well, Greg, I only play Call of Duty for the single player expansions, and me, there me are many people out there like me, and I have no problem paying the full price just for the single player. Um, there has been talk in the past or you know some analysis of whether call of duty would go to like a live service or a subscription model yeah. they have call of duty online in asia and there's talk of them potentially doing something like that here in the united states so instead of them releasing like the 60 dollars title and then a 50 dollars season pass which has map packs throughout the year of just doing like a monthly subscription price and then you get call of duty every month all year long yeah new updates um, new things but the thing about Call of Duty and it being the biggest entertainment franchise in the world, according to Activision's numbers, mm -hmm. is that they like this giant media push. They like that everyone's talking about the game all at the same time. They kind of do this tidal wave of marketing around launch. They get, you know, athletes involved and actors and a whole bunch of influencers. And there's a lot of people talking about that. And that looks really good to like your, your shareholders and your board of directors, right? You can point to all of these things and go, look at how razzle dazzle we are. It, it so looks, I don't think that that's going to change. It looks good to the general public as well. If yes. you don't know, if you don't know video games you still heard of call of duty you've heard of these numbers right and moving to a live service you lose that pop because suddenly it it becomes this thing where people are super into the patch notes if they're super into call of duty but how do you make that an event right this is the fall event every year and that's why they have these studios cycling so everybody's you know it's going to be treyarch it's going to be sledgehammer it's going to be infinity ward it's going to keep switching off so that they can make sure they're funneling it out and getting the day they want like you're talking about absolutely and also it allows them to maintain the quality level of the franchise mm -hmm. as much as people love to hate on call of duty they still put out really fantastic games like the polish and the, and the gameplay is is really excellent they've set a really great bar for game design and you can hate on the content if you don't like it that's totally fine you don't ever have to play call of duty but clearly millions of players across the world are playing it because it continues to sell well each and every year now have they had a couple of down years yes do they maybe need to take a break from the franchise like assassin's creed did and maybe take a look at the formula and figure out how they can change it up sure but i think this year with a return to world war ii yeah. i think they're gonna kill it this year i really do well i mean what's interesting about it is i'm the same way as you i like playing them for the campaign and these the future things and the mech robots and the, the spaceship into space like from earth to space while cool ideas were never narrative hooks that really got me right mm -hmm. i'm more excited for this campaign in world war ii i just got my copy before we came on than i have been for a campaign in the call of duty in quite some time because they said all the right things about it of like, cool, you're in this one platoon, you're following through these years, you're not doing Battle of the Bulge, you're not doing like you're not doing how I, World War II Call of Duties used to be of let's take you to Omaha Beach and let's have you do the giant moments. They're like, we want to tell you a character based story. And granted, they say that every time, every time they bring out Kevin Spacey or Brandon Routh, it's like we're in this for the story and blah, 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 blah. This one seems like what Mark's preview talks about is like, hey, the gameplay is different and interesting enough. And then from what I've seen before, if it's even a little bit like an interactive band of brothers where I'm really getting to know these guys and they're not just that guy's, oh, he's dead, whatever. I don't care if I'm actually engaging with them and playing through it and having it be a tight Call of Duty story, right? That is an afternoon into an evening playthrough. That's exactly what I want out of them. Do I think there'll be a Call of Duty that ships without a single player campaign, Greg? No. Because I feel like at this point, mm -mm. it's they have a system done, let alone the fact of they saw what happened to Titanfall. They saw what happened to Battlefront, where they came out without 
a single player campaign and got flogged for it. And that was the big knock. I think what's the power of Call of Duty is the fact that you're going to get the multiplayer kids who want to come in and just play Call of Duty no matter what. But when you do something cool in the single player, that's when you get let a, a, another pop from people like us, IGN, people who would never ever talk about this. If this was a multiplayer only game, I'd be like, cool, not for me. I play Destiny. I don't need to worry about it. But knowing that there's a limited time I can hop in and enjoy those shooting mechanics, get a good story. I'm going to talk about it. Put simply, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Exactly. It ain't broke. Let's see where we're going now. What do you think? Oh, this is an interesting one. Marco writes in about a Kotaku article. Hi, Greg and Andrea. I have recently read an article on Kotaku about the relationship between game devs and alcohol in Australia. A number of devs have spoken out about how networking meetings are usually organized in pubs slash bars and how this can create a divide between individuals who drink and those who do not, either for health, religious, personal reasons. I found myself thinking, well, why not just go to the bar and drink, drink water or soda? But then I thought maybe some people don't want to be around alcohol if they are a recovering alcoholic, or some people might not feel comfortable in a usually loud, rowdy bar setting. Either way, I would love to hear your thoughts about the relationship of alcohol and the gaming industry and whether you've experienced any issues with it first or second hand. Keep up the awesome content, Marco. P.S. How's the Platinum Chase going for Destiny, Greg? Have you finished Persona 5 yet? Get off my back, Marco! That's how it's going on both fronts. Destiny 2, still planning on platinuming this weekend. Got a lot of work. Don't okay me, Kevin. Did you check what the nightfall is this week? No. I'm just going to, I mean, that's. Because you're not going to, you're I'm not going to do, you're not prestiging the raid. No, God, no, no, no. I'm going to have to, somebody's going to have to drag me through nightfall and trials of the nine. And then <laughs> Some, I just got to get the world. Somebody's going to have to drag It'll me happen. through. Don't worry about it, everybody. Probably, <laughs> maybe. The problem with Des, uh, uh, Extra Life is that I always envision I'm going to sit there and play games just for 24 hours. And inevitably, it's like, I'm already barbecuing. Now we're spinning a wheel. Somebody's dying my hair. That's happening. It's like, who the hell knows what the time will really do. But it's all for the big, beautiful kids. We'll see what's up. Uh, our alcohol. I found this interesting because uh, recently, and not because of this article, because this article is, yeah, just a few days old, or a day old now, I saw our friend, Eric Pope, quote tweet somebody, and this is from within the past month, but quote tweet basically like, hey, maybe don't think about having your team building events at bars. It's not fun for those of us who don't drink. And Eric Pope was like, yeah, totally. This is, I guess, happens to me all the time or I agree with this kind of thing. And it was one of those things I'm like, oh, I never really thought about it. And then having this article drop and have uh, Marco write in with it, it's like, yeah, I guess that's a, that's a real thing that's going on. And our industry is so heavily tied to drinking and going to the bar and doing all these different things where you go to an event or you go to a happy hour to meet PR people or you go to a game thing and it is open bar and you play the game for 30 minutes and then start drinking and hanging out. It is an interesting thing of like, we are still such a young industry and how this plays into it. I don't think it's exclusive to video games. I think a lot of industries um, do happy hour meetups or have open bars at their company parties and and things like this. Um, I think that the reason why you see drinks at a lot of these events are because they're a social lubricant, right? Yeah. And we're an industry full of nerds who are usually socially awkward. We just want to sit in our dark room and play this game and be left alone. Yeah, in order for us to be able to talk to each other, you know, a little bit of... um, Uh, Liquid courage is sometimes helpful to people, but I absolutely understand how people who don't drink um, can sometimes take issue with this. Um, I think it comes down to like, you know, your personal relationship with alcohol and how it has affected you in in, in your life. Um, I would hope that people who do have issues with alcohol would be comfortable going to their employer to say, hey, can you make our team exercises not specifically in a place designated to sell alcohol, but like if alcohol is there, I don't see why that should be an issue either because it has to come to a point where like obviously you want to take everybody's feelings into perspective but you also can't you know take one person's and prioritize them over everybody else's Mm -hmm. right it needs to be kind of a group effort so maybe you have it at a restaurant where people can eat food and in addition to having drinks as well instead of it just being a bar where there's only drinks sure or maybe you have it in a park you know and then you don't have to worry about it um I don't think that making it specifically about games is is poignant here because I think this is an like I mentioned earlier like this happens across many different kinds of industries. Of course, I don't think it's I just a, feel like ours ours parties more often than others, and this is me not working in others, but I mean like 
I when I was in the at a newspaper, right? Yeah, company party, the holiday party, that kind of thing happens, sure. But how many weeks is it where it's like, all right, well, Namco's doing this event, and then two days later, Square's doing this event, and then it's game dev drink up, or it's some kind of thing at the full, some, or it's kind of funny he's doing something stupid. And I'm not saying that's every week, but it is an option where it's coming out happening. Um, certainly at a lot of events, but again, I, it's all about your personal choice and if you choose to to drink or to not drink. I yeah. know many people in the video game business that Don't. I see at all of these events that yeah. never have a drink. Like multiple people I know that whenever I see them, they're just not drinking because they just that's not part of their lifestyle. Sure. And they have never once said to me, like, I feel uncomfortable at this event because other people are drinking. Um, so I guess I would be curious to know, like, what causes people to feel uncomfortable? Obviously, there's a line, right? Sure. Like, if you're... When shit face. If you're at, like, a late night event and somebody is overindulging and becoming, you know, s socially ridiculous, right? They're behaving badly. Um, I think that's another issue. But when we're talking about a company party where there's maybe it's like an hour long or a couple hours long. Yeah. You know, I don't know if I've ever been to an issue or been to a, a video game event specifically. I can't remember one where I saw alcohol derail the event. Mm, mm, mm. Because for the most part, people that I, I know in my professional circle all are under the same understanding that this is a networking work. event. To work, yeah. And that like, while it's okay to have like a couple of drinks, no one's going there to like tie one on and like get blackout drunk at the end of the night. It's not sure. a party. It's still a professional networking mixer event. Yeah. It's an interesting line. It's an interesting as somebody who drinks and doesn't think about it, something I never really contemplated until i saw like the pope tweet and like i've been obviously i mean like your husband doesn't drink right and so no, like, he doesn't drink at all i remember the first time at an event where john was like that i was like oh okay cool and it wasn't like he was he's not preachy about it or anything like that it he's was just not, like no. oh like oh, okay i didn't even think about that yeah the first time we met actually was at a video game party at gdc and i was like hey i'm going up to the bar can i get you something and he was like oh i'll, I'll just take a diet coke and i was like but it's open bar man are you sure you don't want anything <laughs> you're putting like the cocktail uh, the olives into your purse you're like, <laughs> it's all free it's it was, it was the first time we, we talked about it, i was much younger so yes all the free drinks i was like give sure. me no no stuff. totally and that's what i'm talking but, about where it's like yeah but but i i he was like no i just don't i just don't drink and i was like oh that's cool like, you know, teach yes. their own. No, yeah, it's interesting. I was like, I'll get you all the Diet Cokes you want then. And that's now your life. Yeah. A yep. constant I, supply of Diet Cokes. Literally, Coke. I buy a case every like two days, you guys. It's bad. For the Halloween party, I was trying to get him two liters, but the I couldn't, I went to two stores, no two liters. Really? I had to just buy one liters of Diet Coke and have them on hand for him. Mm. Weird. It's very weird. Must be a San Francisco Somebody thing. Somebody look into what's happening. Uh, Vince Patel. Writes into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Greeting best friends and kind of funny games daily hosts. Just a quick question about game of the year discussion that happened yesterday. <laughs> is there a specific reason that Uncharted, The Lost Legacy, is largely being omitted from even being nominated? Yes. I don't think it's game of the year. Andrea? No. It has no chance of winning, so why would it be nominated? Vitz continues because I'm joking around a little bit. Wow. I ha while I hail the achievements of Horizon, especially for a new IP, the title I had the most fun with was Uncharted. Was it a game that's good, not great in the critical sphere? Much love from the UK, Vitz. I think that's a good way to put it. I think it was Uncharted. I, I don't. We've talked about other things. I think Uncharted Lost Legacy is a great game. It's enjoyable. It's beautiful. Performances are great. Uh, I didn't love it as much as the other Uncharted's. I didn't think it moved the needle and this is what we start talking about when we talk about game of the year and like mm -hmm. granted everybody comes at it a little bit differently but even with yours right of like if it's going to win the majority of an uh, of awards or categories i should say uh it's similar here where it's just like game of the year needs to be like holy shit i can't believe and this is my interpretation of game of the year holy shit i can't believe this game this is the pinnacle of what gaming is in 2017 2016 2014. and i don't think lost legacy is in that discussion it as was great just, as it is it was just a new story in uncharted 4 yeah right and uncharted 4 was nominated for game of the year because it was an outstanding achievement but uncharted lost legacy is the same engine it's the same gameplay design the same art design the same narrative design, even though the narrative was different, um, but like it's very much just more Uncharted Four, and so while that makes it a good game yeah. and a, a good I game to play, play yeah. it doesn't make a game of the year. Yeah, I agree. I think it just it's it's great, and it's because it's more Uncharted Four, but it's just more Uncharted Four, which sounds weird to say, but also isn't because 
Zelda and Horizon and Mario, I think, all did something new this year. And of course, Game of the Year itself, PUBG. Why not? Not even. Not even. <laughs> Why not? Pete wrote in to kindoffunny.com slash KFGD and says, Good afternoon. With Dreams being a disappointing no show at Paris Games Week, it seems like most gamers have begun to give up hope. They've since tweeted out, and this is Media Molecule, has since tweeted out that they'll have something to unveil before the end of the year, but it seems like too little too late. What can Media Molecule do to change the narrative that their game is in trouble and to prevent a fizzle release like The Last Guardian or Gravity Rush 2? Should they only come out and release it as quickly as possible? Should they only come out and release it as quickly as possible and take their lumps? Make a big showcase at PSX and try to build up hype? Launch as a PlayStation Plus free game? Thanks. Why not, Pete? I really feel for dreams, right? The tenor of the conversation being down on dreams is really from listening to people like us who have been saying for years, I don't know what this game is and what's going on. Blah. If they come out at PSX and like, hey, everybody, let's show you dreams and they show you an awesome trailer that everybody's like, holy shit. Yes, I need to play that. The narrative's changed. Right now, the narrative exists because there's a vacuum of information. So it is every time there's a press conference that comes and goes, every time the summer comes and the beta they said was going to happen doesn't happen, we're all like, where is Dreams? And it's a, and you go back to like, we saw it at PSX and they were trying to convince us that it was a real game and then they were making buildings and we haven't seen it, but it's this and it's it's moving it around. It's Well, there was a, um, a couple quotes at VG247.com. Um, Michael Denny, Sony's Senior Vice President of Worldwide Studios. Did you see this? No. Um, was speaking to them and about dreams. Now, what he said was, quote, it is still in development and is still very, very exciting. We're big fans of everything Media Molecule has done and it is so wonderful and it is very much in development, very much still progressing and will very much be exciting when we talk about it next. Um, Denny went even Denny even went so far as to suggest we could finally be seeing dreams return sooner than expected. Uh, quote, it is going to be massive. It's incredible. We've shown lots of it before. When we come back with it again, that will be fairly soon without putting any dates on it. It's going to blow people away. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, dreams are this Media is from yesterday. Media Michael did tweet after the PlayStation Paris games the week of like, hey, congratulations, everybody who showed stuff. Like, you're still going to hear from us. And somebody was like, when? Well, PSX, duh. They're like, before, <laughs> before the end of the year. So it's, it's got to be PSX. And I do think that you come out with an awesome trailer, you show this game's phenomenal. And then if you do, I don't think you need to PlayStation Plus it. I don't think that. I don't know if that, it depends what how, how great the trailer is. If the trailer is just, okay, it's good. And then you're like, it's PlayStation Plus and it's available now. That's a huge, another boost. And people are going to talk it and they're going to try it and they're going to see what it is. But based on what we've seen before, it's just that thing of like, yeah, it's Media Molecule who are fucking awesome. I love Media Molecule. Well, They're super the creative. Well, I think the concept of this game is such a tough sell that they have that working against them yeah. um, that I've completely forgot about this game. Like A lot of people have. Just like, didn't, I'm not thinking about it. I don't really care about it. I don't even barely remember it. I'm looking at some of the screenshots now. And I'm You're like, little, oh. I don't remember what they call their little teardrop character that's supposed to possess people. Yeah, and I'm like, I don't, I barely remember this game. The, if you want to know the best analogy I can think of or the best like comparison here is that this game from what they've shown is not in the bad context, but this feels like such a PlayStation three thing of the, Hey, we're PlayStation and we do artsy stuff and we're going to put out an exclusive every month. And like these guys have made this crazy weird thing. Let's look at it. And that's and that right at the launch of PlayStation four. It was like, Hey, we're switching over to being gamers first. This is all about games, 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 games. And we're going to have indies in there. And then now we're to a PlayStation four. That is about like, Hey, best place to play. We have the exclusives. We have the market share. It's just going to be triple A stuff. We show you indies take care of themselves. I don't see how, PlayStation first party is going to get behind this and advertise and market this thing to be on when they're out there with Battlefront or God of War or all these games that are like AAA, easy to wrap your head around. You're not here to think about the art of games, whereas this is so much an art project. Yeah, no, it's not meant for holiday, right? Yeah. So that's probably why we haven't heard much about it. Um, and we'll probably hear more about it at PSX. And then if we're going to talk about a release window, it would be outside of those big giant temple games that summertime yeah yeah Get franchises that are easy to recognize yeah we'll see psx coming up quick and then the final question for today 
comes from Ryan. Ryan writes in and says, Hey, with the release of Skyrim VR for PlayStation VR getting closer, we finally received a lot of footage showing the game in all its glory. The reactions from those who got to try it with full locomotion at Paris Games Week have so far been overwhelmingly positive. With that in mind, I have to ask, do you feel the hype? How are you feeling about the game as its release looms even closer? Will you find the time to play it with everything else coming out this year? I appreciate it. Everything the entire Kind of Funny crew does. And I always look forward to listening each and every weekday. Ryan, a.k.a. Skiss or Sky, UH60 <laughs> on PSN. <laughs> no. It, pa- it pains me to say I have n- zero hype for this after playing it earlier this year. Played it at E3 and I was like, whoa, this doesn't look good. It does not look good. Yeah. Now, I didn't play it with full locomotion. Yeah. I played it with the teleport uh, traversal. But I did play Fallout with full locomotion and... It was not good. Combat is tough. It's very difficult to turn. Um, the biggest thing about combat in these open world Bethesda games is you're constantly in and out of your menus. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to move quickly with the camera because the enemies are all around you. And it's just incredibly difficult to accomplish in VR. Yeah. And so I'm really, really skeptical that this is going to be successful. And I'm glad that there has been some positive things coming out of Paris Games Week. But when I tried this just Everyone a, I just a few E3. months ago, yeah. I, I'm disappointed. Yeah. But the th- here's the thing. Skyrim doesn't need to be successful on PSVR. Mm-hmm. It's been successful. It's Continues sold. To be, it's yeah. sold millions of year after year. So like, if they if they biff this one, it's not a big deal. Yeah, no, I, I like to see I like to see Bethesda getting in there and trying this tech in the same way I like to yeah. see them bringing Skyrim and Wolfenstein Two to Switch. Uh, but yeah, when I played, I was like, Oof, no, this is not to mention that. I know it is. This is one of those games that always sounds cool. Let's get into these. Like, but I when I played Fallout, even I was like, oh, this is cool but not how i want to play fallout not how i want to play Mm-mm. these first person games no it's it's very challenging the the movement is really difficult like the concept of of skyrim and vr sounds really cool yeah. but then when you see it in in reality it's it's not like the 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 dream of what it could be is just not there yeah in the hardware in the software and it's it was just disappointing it fell flat like I had to get out of VR quickly because I got so sick because the motion was so broken. No. And like I, there was a, I went into one cave and the spider came and I was trying to fight and it just went really badly. And I was like, no, this is not, I can't. Nope. <laughs> See you guys later. Take it off. You're out. <laughs> Time to squat up. This is where one of you writes into kind of funny.com slash K F G D. You need to give me your name, your username, platform of choice and why you need help in whatever video game it is. I read it here. The best friends find you and everybody has a great time today. Torin's writing in on PC. Ugh. the PC name he's using is a, is all one word, a bloated star hashtag one eight six four. That might be, that might be a discord thing. I don't know. Let's see if he explains it. Hey everyone. Poompa Loompa is back, but this time I need help on PC. Last time I asked for help with the Rat King quest in Destiny 2, and the kind of funny best friends came to my aid and helped me and my brother complete the quest and even do the raid. Shout out to Fatal Otaku and Gassi97. However, with the raid out on PC, I need some best friends to help me out once again. It is my friend's first time playing Destiny 2, and we are all gearing up for the raid, but we need three more people. If any kind of funny best friends want to help us out, that would be great. So everybody, uh, if you're one of these PC dorks using your Excel spreadsheets and Clippy, a bloated star, number sign, 1864. Enjoy. Do your taxes while you're there. Time for a rotating segment. This is a very special, this trophy can go fuck itself. Greg and Andrea, my name is Kevin Garaventa. As soon as Wolfenstein 2 New Colossus launched on Friday, the forums on many of the PlayStation-centric websites went ablaze about the requirements for the Platinum Trophy for the game and one trophy in particular. Mind Laban, I have no idea how to pronounce it. He puts in parentheses. I think I got close. This bronze trophy requires you to beat the game on the hardest difficulty without dying and without checkpoints, meaning this 10 to 14 hour game has to be played in one sitting. I like a challenging platinum as many of the other players out there, but as soon as I learned about this one, I decided that the platinum just isn't for me. As you are kind of funny's lead trophy hunter, Greg, I'd like to know what you think about this kind of trophy. Should the mode of the trophy itself be altered? Love the show and everything kind of funny does. Kevin. I don't like this trophy, but here's my thing. 
mm-hmm. I respect this trophy. Because as we've said on the show already, not let alone the other times we've talked about it, Wolfenstein's whole shtick is that it's a fucking hard game and it's going to kick you in the balls and shove your face in the poop. And you're like, I just want to play. It's fun. And I keep dialing the difficulty down, right? right. If you're Wolfenstein crazy and you're dialing the difficulty up because the, there's hard difficulty trophies in general you have to get, this seems like the kind of sadistic shit you sick fucks are going to want. You're, there's something wrong with all of you. Bethesda and Pete Hines knows it. And they're using that to their advantage to make some crazy ass twisted platinum. No one in their right mind should bother getting, but one of you is going to do it. If you haven't already, you probably already have memorizing stuff, doing all these different things. It's crazy. I I hate, I personally don't like trophies like this, but it's, I don't think it's when you see a developer fuck up their trophy list where they Mm -hmm. put in a stupid achievement and they don't, they Friday the 13th entire trophy list, right? Like, Hey, this will be funny. Yeah. Everybody's like, Hey, this this sucks. This is not fun. We don't like this. I think this is them very much being like, let's, let's torture these bastards. Let's go out there and see who the real Wolfenstein sick fucks are. So they're looking for you, sick fucks. It's for you. You going to get it, Andrea? <laughs> you know I don't care about trophies. Don't care. Okay, fine. I just like to play games. That's, that's respectable. Andrea? Yes. It's time for You're Wrong. Can we please figure out how to clear we, I, this I talked thing? to Joey today. Remember, if you, we do something wrong live on the show get a fact wrong you need to write into kind of funny.com slash you're wrong tell us what the fact we screwed up then we will go through it but yeah i i complimented the mods on their clearing it out and then they they stopped clearing it out now granted maybe they're busy i talked to joey about it if not we can move to a google form it's no big deal but just okay. go to the last page and work with it. so multiple people wrote in on this technicality you sound thrilled about it you sound like you're really enjoying this correction greg said the kind of funny stream will be 24 hours oh, but with the Jesus. fallback for nope. daylight savings it will be a 25 hour live stream due to the two instances of 1 a.m now here's the thing motherfuckers did i say when we were ending the fucking stream no it starts at 10 a.m it ends at 9 a.m the next day suck it that's what <laughs> happens to you all right this is the same shit we had to go through last year and we survived that we'll survive this if you wrote in with that correction, here's what I want you to do. Take your fist, punch yourself in the stomach. Don't um, really do that. Capitalist pig, not sure which is wrong here, you or this Kotaku article, but according to this, most of the Switch games you mentioned came out on Tuesday, not today. Huh. Update, check my own Switch, and Perception is listed as releasing on 1031 Halloween. All the Sounds di- like your list is off by a day or two. Here's the problem. All the dates I read came from Nintendo's press release. <laughs> Their <laughs> usual Thursday press release of here's what's going up on the eShop. Dang it, so Nintendo. So maybe they finally gave in and started updating on Tuesday. Either way, Nintendo, you're wrong. Everybody write into Bill Trinan and tell him he's wrong. Don't give him no context. <gasps> Just tweet at him. Uh, Batman Dan six says hack slash G U last recode is out tomorrow. Not today. Just clarifying for the five people who look forward to this myself included. And that's directly from the PlayStation store. He linked. Nice. Um, maybe it's just PCs out today. Cause that's from your website. The VG release dates thing. Um, Ponzer juice says Andrea said pillars of eternity Two definitive edition will release on November 15th. Pillars of Eternity 1 Definitive Edition is releasing that day. That is my bad. Pillars of Eternity 2 has no release date as of yet. My apologies. Um, uh, mm, mm, Editorial hasn't happening? Mm, too many words? They're using too many words? See, um, Awesome Mastic, you do this a lot. Oh, here we go. You you write in, which I, we appreciate, of course, but a lot of times it's not like a, a cut like, hey, this is what you got wrong. Um, he says ad- additional information of the LA Noir story. Nintendo offers a 32 gigabyte game card for Switch, so the only reason the physical version of LA Noir needs an additional download is because Rockstar are being cheap and opting for the 16 gigabyte game cards. This obviously starts another discussion about Nintendo game cards being more expensive than discs, but sure, the digital version will still require an SD card since it's too big for the internal storage, like the article mentioned. So we're not wrong; it's just more facts. Right. Yeah. It's a clarification. Yeah. Maybe something worth writing into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD about instead of you're wrong. Um, this They literally started their thing with commentary. So ah, get them out of here. So this is, I, I appreciate you writing in Titan Matrix, but this is definitely something you should write into kindoffunny.com slash KFGD with, not you're wrong. But thank you for your commentary, but I will not read it under you're wrong. <laughs> You're tough but fair, Andrea Renee. I mean... You're the busiest lady in the business. You listen, ain't got time for bullshit. Uh, we didn't get something wrong here. If you literally st- start your you're wrong with commentary, that's that's not what you're wrong is for. Tough but fair. That's why we like you. That's why we respect you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, November 2nd, 2017. Tomorrow, guest host on Kind of Funny Games Daily, the star of Battlefront 2, Janine uh, Van... No, I just grew up. It's Janina. Her, I'm always confused. I'm going to screw up her last name. Gavankar. Janine, Janina from the Game Over Greggy Show. My friend is coming through to do it. Uh, you know her. She doesn't like Mitch Dyer. Neither do we. <laughs> We'll make sure we talk about that. Uh, if you want to watch, remember it's live. Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. You can get it later. YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Or you can listen on podcast services around the globe. No matter where you pick up the show. Thank you so much for doing so. Extra Life around the corner. Remember, kindoffunny.com slash Extra Life. Sign up or donate and get ready to watch us be idiots for 24 hours. Not 25, motherfuckers. On Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.